fulfill our destiny and purpose in God is because we don't even know who we are. We go through an entire life of just searching, wondering, trying to get confirmation from outsiders as to who we are and how God wants to use us. But we're living in a time now where God wants you to know for yourself who you are and what he's called you into the kingdom for. Isaiah, the 40th chapter, says, beginning at 28, it says, Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they, somebody say they, they, that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. Help me preach here tonight. With wings as eagles. They shall what? And not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Ah, that's a promise that God made to us. Jude 1, 24 through 25. Jude says, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God and Savior be glory and majesty and dominion and power both now and ever. Amen. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be in your house once again. We thank you, O oh God, for the opportunity to share with your people what you've shared with me. Father, I ask you to allow me to decrease that you may increase. Allow us, O oh God, not to leave the doors the same way that we entered through the doors, but allow us, O oh God, to be empowered, encouraged, enlightened by your word through your spirit. This we claim tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Tonight, I want to use for a subject, I told you we live in a time where we are sensitive. It's the way we're conditioned. You have a lot of fatherless children, people that come in from broken homes, and people are offended so much until it prevents them from pursuing and achieving their God-ordained purpose. I want to use for a subject tonight. God wants to deliver some of us tonight. How many recognize you need deliverance in certain areas? The subject tonight is haters. I'm still standing. Haters, I'm still standing. Subtopic on tonight, deliver me from the opinion of my haters. All of us have haters in here. Y'all don't believe that, do you? Can I be real? All of us have haters. And if we be a little more realer, some of us, all of us have been haters. Uh, we don't want to talk about everybody hate us. But we all have been the hater to somebody else. That's just a part of living. Um, one thing, I was talking to somebody that's baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, and we was talking, and they say, I don't have no haters. I'm like, you don't have any haters. They thought they were saying something. But if you're saying you don't have any haters, then you're better than Jesus Christ. He said if they did it to a green tree. But the thing you have to recognize, God wants us all to rise above our haters. You ought to thank God for your haters. Without Lex Luthor, Superman couldn't be who he was. Without Octopus or whoever he was, Spider-Man couldn't be who he was. So you got to have a hater to pull out the super abilities that God has placed on the inside of you. You got to have a hater that's going to kick you and put you down because you got to rise again one day. And without that hater doing what they did, you'll never know the strength that you have on the inside. So you ought to thank God for your haters. Somebody shout hallelujah. Haters, I'm standing. I'm standing. Why do I say haters, I'm standing? Uh, it's significant that you recognize that we got to always be standing. As I began to look at the scripture, and God began to speak to my spirit. I went to the UrbanDictionary.com, and it said, "You know, hate is a new word that we have out. Everybody talks about hater. It's a person that simply cannot be happy for another person's success. 
It also says, so rather than be happy, they make a point of exposing a flaw in that person. I remember when. Hating the result of being a, hating the result of being a hater is not exactly jealousy. jealousy. The hater doesn't really want to be the person he or she hates. Rather, the hater wants to knock someone else down a notch. Uh, one of the examples it has, it says, Susan said, you know, Kevin from accounting is doing well. He just brought a house in a very nice part of town. Then Jan said, if he's doing so well, why does he drive that 89 Taurus? <laughs> Haters always throwing shade on you. Y'all didn't know I knew that, did you? Haters always throwing shade on you because they hate you. Like I said, they don't want to be you, but they just want to throw some shade on your parade. But you got to recognize God wants, am I talking to the young people tonight? God wants you to rise above your haters. You have to recognize haters is not that they are just a hater, but there's a spirit behind a hater. And most of the time, haters are people that you have emotional attachments to. They can be relatives, they can be friends, they can be co-workers that you love, but you're not getting love back from them. And what happens is, we have to recognize that it's not just them, but it is a spirit that recognizes something about God on the inside of you. Well, whether you believe it or not, your hater sees your potential. Your hater sees the anointing that lies on the inside of you. But the enemy uses them to prevent you from getting where God wants you to be. But you got to recognize, you got to begin to take a look at yourself. You have to step back and begin to look at yourself because if you're not careful, you will begin to believe what they say about you. When we began to look at Jesus, Jesus had haters around him. One of his haters was even one of his disciples. But you never saw Jesus do anything wrong to him. Even when the time came, Jesus knew that he was a hater even before he chose him. But he chose him so that he could be a light for that hater. And what you have to recognize, many times we want to expose our haters. We want to go off on those that are not for us. But sometimes God wants you just to hold your peace and let him fight your battle. Sometimes God doesn't even want you to say anything, but he wants you to be that light so that they'll have no excuse for what they see on the inside of you. God wants you, even when you know that they're your hater, to show love to them in spite of how they're treating you. As I told you earlier on this morning, one of the things about faith is, is that you have to recognize it takes faith to forgive somebody that has done you wrong. It takes faith to, to release them. It takes faith to let them know that I love you in spite of and not charge them for what they've done. It takes faith, and it takes so much faith until Peter said, when Jesus told him, he said, Lord, increase my faith to believe that I can do this in these situations. As we began to look in the scriptures, I told you this morning, that is one of the things that's going to send so many people to hell is unforgiveness. And we have to work on ourselves because one of the things that prevents us from forgiving is our pride. Look at somebody and say pride prevents as we began to look even at a little closer at the hater spirit, one of the things that the hater spirit wants to plant in you is doubt, fear, and unbelief. If they can plant doubt, fear, and unbelief and talk you out of the will of God, they'll do it. Uh, we began to look at Jesus. Jesus went to his fellows and he said, who do men say that I am? And they began to say, some say this and some say that. And then Peter stood with boldness and said, thou art the Christ, the son of God. And then Jesus praised him and said, you didn't know that, but my father, which is in heaven, revealed it unto you. And he began to tell them so many days after this, I've got to go and die in so many words. And Peter said, Lord, be it far from you, because the spirit of a hater rose up in him to prevent Jesus from fulfilling the will of the father. You got to recognize God does not want doubt, fear, and unbelief to be planted within our hearts. And what we have to do on a daily basis is guard our heart against these things. You got to recognize when you hear, when you know the will of God concerning your life, there is a spirit that recognizes and know what God wants to do with you. 
there's a spirit that knows that God has greatness on the inside of you. As I told you on this morning, many times we talk about Elisha and Elijah, and we say that they were great prophets, and they were great prophets. But as I told you, Jesus came back and threw a monkey wrench when he said, uh, there's no greater prophet than John. And then he turned around and flipped it again and said, there's no greater in the kingdom, there's no one is greater than the least in the kingdom, saying that we're even greater than John the Baptist, Elisha, and Elijah. And you know what? The enemy recognizes that there is greatness in you. How many believe that there is greatness in you? What the enemy wants you to do is to feel that pride is in you when you recognize that God has something great for you to do. And when you don't recognize that God has something great for you to do, you will believe what others say about you. But what God wants you to recognize is that he has not given you the spirit of fear. He has not placed doubt within your heart. He has not placed unbelief within your heart. But God has given us the spirit of power, love, and the sound mind. And what we have to do is get into the word of God and begin to believe the word of God. You got many times we believe what others say more so than what the word of God says. You got to get from just listening to worship and praise songs and begin to listen to what the word of God says. Sometimes we think that singing the songs and hearing the songs will substitute for the word of God. But young people, I'm telling you today, you've got to get rooted and grounded in the word of God. You've got to begin to get a defense against the word from those that are hating against you. You've got to begin when they tell you that you're nothing and you'll never be nothing. You've got to begin to tell them that I am the righteousness of God. You've got to begin to tell them that I am a joint heir with Jesus Christ. When you begin to see yourself the way God sees you, that's when the anointing on the inside of you began to rise up. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. What the haters want to do is to prevent you from fulfilling your purpose and destiny in God. You have to recognize when people begin, there are a lot of people that even pray against you doing the will of God. They may not get down on their knees and say it, but when they put in the atmosphere, we say that there's life and death in the tongue. And when a saved person begins to talk against somebody that's doing the will of God, they are putting death in the atmosphere. They are putting death. When they say, uh, Brother Purnell, your ministry is not going to succeed, they're praying against you. When they begin to say it won't last, they are praying against you, even with the Holy Ghost. And what you have to begin to recognize, you got to counter what the enemy puts in the atmosphere. You got to begin to believe what God says about you. You got to believe what God has spoken into your spirit. You got to believe regardless of what everybody else say, that if God be for me, he's more than the world against me. But you got to begin to get rooted and grounded in the word. As I told you earlier, so many times we are emotional. We're emotional creatures. Even after we get saved, we still are emotional. And when you're emotional, you're fragile. You're fragile when you're emotional. And what God wants you to do is get rooted within the word. You've got to get rooted and grounded within the word. Psalms 1 says you've got to be like that tree that's planted by the rivers of water. When you're planted by the rivers of water, your root goes down deep. And not just deep, but it spreads out wide. But that can only happen when you get rooted in the word of God. The enemy, I'm telling you, I'm talking to you young people, the enemy does not want you all to get rooted in the word of God. He wants y'all to just to be satisfied with these songs. Songs are good, but songs are not the word of God. You can't sing your way through a storm. You can't sing your way through a mountain. But you got to have the word on the inside to speak to the mountain. You can't tell the devil that uh, break every chain because he's not going to recognize that. But you have to do like the angel Gabriel said, the Lord rebukes you. And when you begin to speak what thus said the Lord, that's when you're going to begin to see the chains breaking. The enemy wants you not to get into the word of God. Because in the word of God, you begin to see yourself. You begin to see who you are. You begin to see how God created you. You begin to see a reflection of what God thinks of you. 
uh, the reason the world is confused and the world does not want us to get into the word of God because if the people of God get into the word of God, our faith is going to elevate. And not just our faith, but our expectation is going to elevate to a level until we demand God to move in our situation. But as long as you're satisfied with where you are, God will never move the way you want him to move. Ah. As I began to, God began to talk to me. He let me see that many times haters prevent us from receiving miracles. Haters prevent us from doing the will of God. Because we give them too much power within our lives. Uh, many times God can tell you to do something, but if you tell the wrong person, they'll put doubt, fear, and unbelief in you. If you don't tell the right person, you got to, you got to recognize sometimes your prayer partner is not your prayer partner. Sometimes your prayer partner just want to know your business. So they can go tell their prayer partner, and that prayer partner tells another prayer partner. And after a while, all your business is over the church. Some things you can't tell nobody but God. And when you begin to tell God in secret, God begins to bless you openly because you went in the closet and told God. Uh, as I began to see, sometimes your hater can be your prayer partner. They can be praying against you and you don't even know it. Sometimes people that you think are spiritual are not really spiritual. If you, are, if you have a prayer partner, they should have some trophies. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, your prayer partner should have some trophies. I don't know who I'm talking to, but your prayer post pro partner should have a track record of where God has moved, a track record of where God has healed, where God has delivered. If you got a prayer partner and you don't have a track record, you need to cut that prayer partner off. What happens is you can have the wrong first people in your life that are sabotaging you from reaching where God wants you to get. They will sabotage you. But God wants you to know who he thinks you are. He wants to know what you, he wants you to know what he has ordained for you to be and to become. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but God is in here and he wants to deliver somebody from people that have hindered you from becoming what God wants you to be. Uh, sometimes even the family you come from, when you don't come from the right family, people will say, well, you're not supposed to be a preacher because you're a smith. You're not supposed to be a preacher because you're a porter, whoever. All that ever came from your family was whores and, and pimps and drug dealers. But I'm here today to tell you, before the foundation of the world, God declared that he was going to use you, young people, for his glory. But you got to begin to see God using you. You got to begin to see God using you in the school. You got to begin to see God using you in the home. You got to begin to see God using you on the job. But you first of all have to get a vision of God using you. And what the enemy does, he plants doubt. He plants fear and unbelief within your spirit. And when that's there, sometimes, and I've dealt with it. Be honest with you. I've dealt with it. People telling you, you can't do this, you can't do that. And sometimes it takes a lifetime to get over it. But I'm here today to tell you, young people, you don't have to go through the things that some of us went through. Sometimes it takes a lifetime, and there are some people that never get over it. But what God wants you to do is to seek his face. Oh, this is, this is, this is a young people's meeting where we are trying to set you up. Sometimes as I was over there and I was meditating... God brought the thought to me how sometimes that when people die, we say that we're on their shoulders. We're on the dead people's shoulders, which is true. But there are different generations in this room right here. Uh, where's a young fella? Any young men, boys in here? Give me that young boy right there with the glasses right there in the back. I support, if you don't mind, I want you to put him around your neck. Oh, well, on your shoulders. <laughs> oh, all right. Collins, come here. Put him around you. Come on, quick, move, move. I told you, we, it's, it's time. We shout and everything, but we never get anything in our spirit. 
And what God wants us now is to get something within our spirit. We, we go to church and we hear on your shoulders. You got a good back? All right. Now, many times we say we're on the shoulders of those that have gone on before us, which is true. But don't you know this young fellow right here, if this was a pastor, while the pastor is alive, he can be getting counsel and, and learning things while he's alive rather than trying to figure out why he's gone, how would he do it? And that's, that's not just for those that are in ministry, but even young people from your parents. We've gone through what you're going through. Life doesn't change. We didn't have Facebook, we didn't have the internet, but girls and boys will always be the same. Touchy-feely will always be the same. And what you have to do is recognize we want you to get your education. We want you to learn more about God because marriage and these things are going to happen if you keep living. But what the enemy wants you to feel is, and I, 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 I'll just tell you, I thought I wasn't going to have sex. I thought the rapture was going to happen before it. And a lot of times, a lot of times we as saved people, we rush to marriage. Thank you. We rush to marry before we figure out who we are in God. We rush to marriage because we are burning. But what God wants you to do is to figure out your purpose before you hook up with somebody. Because if you hook up with the wrong person, you won't fulfill your purpose. Oh, that's a hard saying, but it's a, it's a true saying. One per hooking up with the wrong person can throw your whole destiny off. And, and especially for you women. Hooking up women with the wrong person can throw your whole life off. A man can recover to a degree, but a woman, it can mess you up for a lifetime. That's, that's, that's reality. And what we have to do as young people, God wants you to not listen to the haters. Even the boys will cause you, they will hate on you, tell you, you think you this, you think you that. Yeah, I do think I'm that. I think I'm this. You got to think more of yourself than what they say about you. You have to believe that what you have is good. You got to believe that God has a greater calling on your life. And when you begin to recognize that God has great things in store for you, you won't settle for the first Joe Blow that blows in your ear. <laughs> young people, it's time to know God. It's time. Young people are the ones that shake the city up. Young people are the ones that shake the city. Don't you know young people attract young people? When they see young people on fire, it draws other young people to come see what's burning. And once they see what's burning, sometimes they can't get away from the fire because they jump in the fire with you. God wants to use you, but what the enemy has, the enemy is a hater that tries to make you feel that the world has more to offer than God. The world has a lot to offer, but it has nothing more than God. The enemy wants you to look at the music and the things of the world. But when you have the Holy Ghost, you have power. You have power that the world don't have. And what the enemy wants to do is to trick you out of activating the power on the inside. He wants to trick you. Don't you know some of you all have the gift of healing, but it's not activated? Some of you have the gift of prophecy, but it's not activated because when you began to tap into your gift, the hater whispers in your ear and begins to say, don't you remember when? Don't you remember when you used to go to the club even when you were saved? Don't you remember when you cursed last week? Don't you remember when? But you ought to tell them God is under the blood. You ought to tell them God is a forgiving God. Don't let nobody hold you to your past when you're moving forward. When you're moving forward, you got to let go of the past. And what you have to do is take your past and use it as a weapon against the enemy. You have to begin to take your past and not just, I'm going to tell you, the world is much smarter than we are. Much smarter. I'm going to tell you something. A lot of times the world is proactive. And what they want to do is, when, 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 when y'all remember, I'm going to use this example. You remember when Kirk Franklin went on Oprah? Y'all don't remember that? People forgot about it. He went on Oprah when Oprah was at, was at her height, and he confessed to the whole nation that he had a pornographic problem. He's told about how he did this and how he did that. You know why he did that? Because somebody was finna expose him. And what he did was, y'all ever watch Scandal? 
Olivia Pope got him out of that. <laughs> it was proactive. If you beat them to the punch, then they can't do nothing with it. And what the enemy wants to do is he uses your past to prevent you from moving forward. But you got to recognize the word of God says that when God forgives, he casts it away. And you know what? The dangerous part about that, when people bring up your past, about your men and your women and your smoking and your drinking. <clears throat> you know what happens? God brings up their past. He said he brings up their past. And while they're looking at you, their past is following them. And you know what? If they keep on that path, they're on their way to hell and they're not fornicating. They're not in homosexuality. They're not in adultery. But because they brought your past up, God brought their past up. And because they don't know, because they don't know the word of God, they shouting, but they still got that past because they brought yours up. They singing and preaching, but they still got their past because they brought you up. But when you go into the word of God and you begin to read the word of God, then you recognize my past is still following me because I brought their past back on them. And the only way you can get your past from off of you is to begin to repent. God, I'm sorry. God, please forgive me. And not just, not just to God, but sometimes you got to go to those people that you hurt. Y'all don't hear me tonight. And see, that's how we move into being haters when we are not able to forgive. The church is the un most unforgiving place on the planet. Most unforgiving place. And we are the ones, as the scripture says, we bring and hold people to their path. Oh, he preaching now. I remember when. Oh, she's singing now. I remember when. But when you say that, you open the gates for your past to be resurrected and is following you. God doesn't want us. I'm trying to help you young people to be a different generation. To be a different generation. Don't you know, I remember when people used to have little... Um, a little secrets to when people got ready to move up in God or do something, they would bring out the secret and say, I got something on you. I got something on you. God does not work like that. This God's church is a forgiving church. And what we have to recognize, we don't want to be haters. It's easy for us to be hated home, but it's easier for us to move into the hating position. Hating is a spirit. It's a spirit that's in the church today. Hating prevents me from worshiping at your church. Hating prevents me from coming to your organization. Hating prevents me from going to your council. I deal with it in Alabama. God wants us as his people to come together because we've been blood bought. We've been blood bought. I told my mama, I told her years ago, if I had sisters and brothers, when I moved out of state and my sisters and brothers never called me, that would hurt me because I thought we were sisters and brothers. And what happens is we as a church of God, we, I remember Bishop used to teach. He said that, in his scripture, he said that your spiritual family is closer than your natural family. And what God wants us to do as young people, he wants you to become a family. The family of God. I remember when we were in school, us as teenagers, we used to fast together. We used to pray together. Bishop Coleman didn't have to call a fast because we loved one another. I remember Brother Purnell and I used to come to prayer at 6 o'clock every Sunday. That's how he got his wife following me to prayer. <laughs> and I'm serious. He followed me to prayer, and I played a joke on him, and he got his wife. They wouldn't have been married if he hadn't have came to prayer. That's serious. You never know what following and doing the will of God will do. But you as young people, God wants to elevate you above your haters. You probably got new haters since you've moved into ministry. But don't let that stop you from moving forward in God. Deacon Andrew, you may get new haters when you move into the deacon prick. But don't let that stop you from doing the will of God. Sometimes when people begin to hate on you, it hurts. It hurts. Am I the only one? It hurts. It hurts. But you got to keep going. I'm, I'm off my message. I'm just free, free, as they say in rap, freestyling. <laughs> but the objective of the hater, one of the th points God showed me, the objective of the hater is to stop you from standing. 
Because when you stop standing, when you faint and become weary, you out the race. But as long as you're standing, you give room and opportunity for God to come in and become, to begin to give you the wings of the eagle. You give God the opportunity to come in and to give you strength to overcome those that are hating on you. You give God the opportunity. But when you're standing, when you're weary, God just walks right by you. You got to stand up. Stand up. Remain standing. And as the scripture says, they that wait upon the Lord, he shall. It's a promise. He shall renew your strength. You got to begin to not just quote the scripture, but you got to begin to walk in expectation. Oh, my God. As I told you earlier this morning, a lot of people say, don't ask God questions. I didn't get that memo. I ask him questions. I quest, people say, don't question God. I question God. And we got that relationship where I ask God and God talks back to me. Now, if y'all don't have that, that's, I, God, I didn't mean to let them in on our secret. But that's the way me and God got it. I can ask him. I can ask him. And when I ask him, I may not get it the first day. I may not get it the second day. But if I keep asking, because his word said that if you ask, it shall be given. If you knock, the door will be open. If you seek, you what? Fine. But you got to do your part to get what God has for you. So I ask God. I ask God questions, and God gives me the answers. And many times when you get the answer, it may not be what you want to hear, but you got to be obedient to the will of God. Don't allow your haters to get you off track. Don't allow them to prevent you from being what God wants you to be. They will usurp. How that word go? What, what Jacob do to Esau? Usurp. He, he tricked him. Tricked him and prevented him. Stole his blessing. Surplanted him. So we don't want the enemy to surplant us. You'll never reach your potential if you don't get a revelation from God. The revelation does not come from your pastor. It doesn't come from the evangelist or prophet that comes through. But God wants to give you a direct revelation. We've been conditioned. God, let me see. And I'm closing because we have to hit the road. But God, let me see. A lot of times we don't know the voice of God. One of the reasons we never say God spoke to me and said is because we don't know God. One of the reasons we don't step out on faith is because we don't know if it's God or not. Because we don't know his voice. And what God wants you to do is to learn his voice, young people, so that when God speaks, you move. One of the things about God's voice, and this is something I want to break with our young people. A lot of times people say, well, I heard it and it was confirmation. Somebody said it and it was confirmation to me. Actually, you don't need confirmation when God speaks once. When God speaks, you never need confirmation. Confirmation is a sign that you had doubt or you didn't know. And then if you really think about it, where did you get confirmation from? A human being. So what God wants you to do is to get to the place to know him to whereas when God speaks, you move. And I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you all. There are sometimes it doesn't Learning God's voice does not come overnight. It's a process. It's a process. It's a process. I didn't, I remember one time as a young person, I asked the older people, well, how do you know the voice of God? Because God was dealing with me to preach at 15. And I asked this in a youth service, and I hadn't got the answer from them yet. <laughs> and when I, when I began to ask God, God began to give me a revelation to see you got to learn me for yourself. And when you learn my voice and hear my voice, move. When you hear the voice of God, God wants to use you. I'm telling you all, God wants to use some of you prophetically. He wants to use some of you even when it comes to singing. Not just to sing the song the way the song is, but go into the song and sing prophetically. Ah, Don't just sing it the way it is on the album, but he wants you to sing what the Spirit downloads to you. 
Uh, I'm here to tell you, God wants to, I hear the Holy Ghost. God wants to even take not just this church, but the body of Christ to a level to whereas we don't even just depend on recording artists, but we come into the house of God and God downloads fresh songs into us that ministers to his people. Songs that come in and to destroy yokes that have people bound. But we've got to get to that place where we don't allow haters to control our destiny. God wants to use some of you in healing. God wants to use some of you in the laying on of hands. But you've got to burn your yoke and cook your ox. you got to burn your yoke and cook your ox before you move into that level. As I close on tonight, those of you that feel that God has something greater for you, that feel 